Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. $300 a week. That's what Governor Whitmer wants to give Michiganders to get back to work. But who's going to be eligible? But we begin tonight with a series of Facebook posts that have a warned police officer under investigation by Internal Affairs. A discussion thread on a local media website got heated and posts of a man who appears to be a warned police officer were screenshotted and sent to the department. Those posts include multiple racially inflammatory comments. Our Mar McDonald is live at the Warren Police Department. Mara, they were made aware of this today. They were, Kimberly. I spoke with Commissioner Dwyer this evening. He says his office was made aware of it today. The department was contacted today and an internal affairs investigation was launched immediately. Let me show you. In a classic Facebook flame war, this poster, who has been identified as a Warren police officer, put this down in writing before he could delete it. Tamia Brooks screenshotted it. Saying that black babies have more black babies, um, Black men aren't there for their kids. If he was black, he would kill himself and stuff like that. Tamia sums it up in a nutshell, but take a look at it for yourself. It's all there, claiming that black people are the most racist in the world, that every child's ambition is to be a rapper, basketball player, or drug dealer. Finishing it off with a glad I wasn't born black, I'd kill myself. What spurred such a nasty post on a public forum? A discussion of the off-duty flight attendant whose behavior forced a Delta flight to make an emergency landing in Detroit. Brooks did a Google search to find out more about the poster and discovered he was a Warren police officer. She contacted the department this morning. I was like, wow, he really said all this stuff. Like, he really thinks this as a cop, you're supposed to protect us. But this is how, I don't know if it's just him that really thinks this about us. Back here live, Tamia says when she called the Warren Police Department this morning that the officer she spoke to was responsive, that she explained what the situation was. She sent over the screenshots and a little more information to them. She said the department got back to her immediately. We're live in Warren tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Hey, Mara, thank you. Some breaking news to get to right now just in from Hamtramck. That's where police are investigating a drive-by shooting. Dozens of shell casings lined the street. This is near Buffalo and Yemen's. Police tell us two people were shot, but they do not have any information on their conditions at this time. With businesses all across the state struggling to find workers, Governor Gretchen Whitmer announcing today she wants to use federal funds to offer Michiganders a bonus to return to work. That bonus? $300 a week. Let's get to Victor Williams with who would be eligible on this. Good evening, Victor. Yes, good evening, Jason. An extra $300 a week on top of your paycheck. That's a whole lot of money, potentially $1,200 a month in this incentive that we've never seen anything like before. But those who are eligible are the ones who are going to be going back to work in the first place. This is the win, win, win incentive that we've been looking for. Governor Whitmer with the new announcement in Michigan's back to work incentive. Eligible laid off employees will earn $300 per week bonus for returning to the workforce through September 4th. That means Michiganders will no longer have to choose to get back to work or still collect a weekly unemployment check. Now they can do both. I think they deserve it, you know? We've been struggling forever around here. Why not give us a little something? But not everyone is a fan of the newly proposed plan. Some are thinking an extra $300 a week may be a little too much. Oh my gosh, I wish I had an old job to go back to. But if they're going back to their old job, then they're just going to continue where they left off. So, no, I don't feel they need an extra $300. Either way, the governor says this is a great way for everyone to transition back into the workplace following COVID-19. This is how we encourage people to get back to work without paying a price or making false choices. And right now there's no idea when this program is going to begin or just how many people are going to be eligible. But of course, we'll keep you updated. Victor Williams, Local 4, back to you. Yeah, and Victor, what about incentives to help people that are trying to find a new job altogether? Anything going on there? Yes, well, the governor is actually working with lawmakers right now to try and change up the law so she can expand this incentive to those who are now trying to find a job. All right, we'll see what happens. Victor, thanks. 
Tonight, there are promising trial results for another vaccine. Novavax says its vaccine is 90% effective, including against variants. It plans to ask the FDA for emergency use authorization in the next few months. Meanwhile, the TSA screened more than 2 million travelers Friday and Sunday. It's the first time that's happened since the start of the pandemic. Today, Michigan reports 338 new cases and eight additional deaths over the past two days. The state vaccination rate is up to 60.5%. In a local four update, progress is being made to get Madison High School in Madison Heights a new roof. We first told you about the leaky roof last week when a group of parents protested the school board meeting, saying the conditions inside the school are only getting worse. While no deal is finalized, the superintendent says the board has given him permission to start the bond process with the state treasury. A Ludington man is arrested after shooting a gun on the Mackinac Bridge. State police say this was a road rage incident over lane usage. 65 year old William Perkola told state troopers it happened after he crashed into another driver who merged in front of him on the bridge. That driver got out to confront Perkola, who allegedly fired a shot into the air. State troopers found two guns in his car. He's now charged with reckless discharge of a firearm. A Virginia couple has pleaded guilty for participating in the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. The couple pleaded guilty to demonstrating unlawfully in the U.S. Capitol during the riots. The misdemeanor carries a sentence of up to six months in prison. The couple, who is the first to reach a deal with prosecutors to reduce the charges to a misdemeanor, also has agreed to pay $500 apiece in restitution. The Macomb County project to prevent major sinkholes takes a big step forward. Crews are digging 60 feet down to a pipe called the Interceptor. This is near 15 Mile and Shaner in Sterling Heights. The Interceptor is where waste goes from 11 different communities. It'll be cleaned and then lined with a resistant polymer. This comes after the 2016 Fraser sinkhole. Crews found critical areas of the county were also at risk during work for this project. It's sort of horrifying, the condition of our underground infrastructure. We found some under the Clinton River. Uh, can you even imagine having an interceptor collapse, an interceptor collapse under the Clinton River? What kind of environmental catastrophe that would be? Sewer rates were not raised to pay for the $30 million project. Much of this money comes from a lawsuit over the Fraser sinkhole. Still ahead, a little league umpire tackled to the ground by a parent. Why it was the umpire who left the ballpark in handcuffs and not that parent. Ben. Jason, we're finishing up a very pleasant day, and believe it or not, it's going to get even cooler as we head towards the middle of the week. Where do you see the numbers for Wednesday morning's lows next? All right, but first, new concerns tonight about this massive chemical fire that continues to burn. That's next.